the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how you can work with pictures in your drawings. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why use pictures in drawings? And there are a few common reasons why people choose to do this. For example, you'll often see a picture used as a background for drawings. And another reason is that you might want to include something like a logo or maybe a watermark on each page of your drawing. Another popular reason is that you can use pictures as shapes in the drawing as well. So for example, if we think back to our office layout example, instead of using the shapes that are available in the stencil, you might want to use a real life image of that particular object. So that might be a desk or a chair or a pot plant or something like that. And if you remember, when we were taking a look at the organization chart, I've used actual real life pictures in that chart as well. So lots of reasons why you might want to use pictures within your drawings. So let's take a look at the options that we have for inserting pictures. So for this, we're gonna jump up to the insert tab. And in the illustrations group, we have pictures and also online pictures. So let's jump into this one first of all. So this will allow you to insert pictures from an external source. And what you see on this screen is very much determined by your own settings. So for example, if you take a look in the bottom left hand corner, I have the option of selecting an image in OneDrive because I have OneDrive connected to my Visio account. If I had SharePoint connected, I would also see SharePoint listed down here. Aside from finding my picture in cloud storage, I also have the choice of browsing the internet for an online picture. And this is basically doing a Bing image search. And if you're not that familiar with Bing, it's basically Microsoft's version of Google. It's just a web browser. You can type the term that you're looking for in that bar at the top, and then it goes away and does a search of the internet. So let's, for example, start with something fairly basic. If I'm looking for a picture of a building, I can type that in and hit enter. It's going to go away, do a web search and pull back all of the matching search results. And what you'll see here is that most of the results that I'm getting are photographs. Now, something that's super important if you are considering inserting images that you find on the web into your Visio drawings, you'll notice just above, I have a checkbox for Creative Commons only. And what that does is it basically only presents to you in the search results images that have a Creative Commons license. And this is all related to copyright and image royalties. Now, it is quite a long story that I don't want to get too much into. But in earlier versions of Visio, you were given access to things like clip art. And I'm sure many of us remember the good old days of clip art. You could use clip art in any of the Microsoft applications, be it Visio, PowerPoint, Word, with no royalties or no copyright. You could freely use that clip art. Now, the clip art facility is no longer available, but instead you can look for any kind of image that you want through online pictures. And if you restrict it to searching for pictures that have a Creative Commons license, then it means that you can get items that you might be able to use freely, even in a commercial situation. A lot of images that you'll just find on Google have some kind of copyright attached to them, which means that if you then use that image in a client presentation or something that a lot of people are gonna see, if you use that image in a video and you put it up on YouTube and you make money from that, then you could find yourself running into some problems. So the main point here is make sure that if you are using this, make sure you have a Creative Commons only image. So what I can do from here is just select the image that I want to use and click on the insert button. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use one of my own images that I have saved off. So let's cancel out of here and let's explore the second option that we have in this illustrations group, which is the pictures option. And this opens up File Explorer, which allows you to browse your folders for the image that you'd like to use. So I'm going to select this little JPEG file and click on open. And I'm going to zoom in. And let's add a couple of other shapes to this drawing. So I've just loaded up the furniture stencil. I'm going to grab the double bed and let's just put that just there and maybe make that a bit bigger. And also the circular table, put that down there 
and make that a little bit bigger as well. So the point I'm trying to emphasize here is that this image that I've inserted is just the same as these other two that have come from the stencil. Everything is considered to be a shape. So I can move it around. I can connect it to other shapes. If I want to use a connector here, I can hover over and I can connect it to other shapes in the same way that I would anything else. Now, one of the things that we haven't really looked at in detail is that when you do have multiple shapes on a page, it might be that you need to arrange them in such a way so that one particular shape is in front or behind the other shapes. So if I grab this zoo experiences shape, let's just make that a bit smaller and drag it over the top of the bed. And you can see that it's placed behind the shape of the bed. So if I wanted to bring this layer, essentially this shape in front of this bed, there's a couple of different ways I can do this. So currently I'm clicked on the home tab in the arrange group. I have two options here, bring to front or send to back. So if I click the drop down next to bring to front, I can choose to bring forward or bring right to the front. So I want this one to be on top. So if I click bring to front, it's going to pull that shape to the front. If I grab the round table and drag that up, you can see that it's behind this shape because this one we've just brought to the front. But if I move that one out the way and pull the table over the bed, the table is on top of the bed. So again, I could utilize that bring to front or send to back to essentially arrange the layers of shapes that I have on my page. So let's jump back up to our arrange group and I'm going to say I want to send to back like so. Now, another thing you'll notice when you insert a picture, if we select it, we have a contextual ribbon here, picture tools, and then we have some formatting options. So we have an adjust group where we can go through and do things like adjust the brightness of this particular picture. We can adjust the contrast. We have an auto balance option, which is where Visio works out the perfect balance of contrast and brightness for your picture. And then we have things like compressing the picture to make it smaller. I can add a border around the outside of the picture. And then I have some additional arranged tools in here. Now I'm going to insert another picture. This time I'm going to use a photograph that I have saved off. So the first thing I want to do here is just delete out everything that I have on this page. Back up to insert into pictures. And I'm going to use this picture here, which is a close up of a giraffe. And you can see that this picture is absolutely massive. So I need to zoom out quite a bit so I can see the end of this picture. I'm just going to drag it all the way in, make it super tiny. And then when I scroll back in, hopefully this should look a little bit better. And there we go. So once again, if I click on this picture, I have pretty much the same options. So I can adjust the brightness, the contrast. I can put a line around the outside. And I also have the right click menu options available to format this shape. So again, this is where I have all of those additional advanced options. So if I wanted to add something like a shadow to this picture, I could come into there and do that. Now, one thing that we haven't looked at yet, if we just go back to our picture tools format ribbon is the crop tool. So with this particular image of this giraffe, I have quite a lot of sky around the outside. So I only really want this giraffe's face. So if I click on crop, you can see I get these little black handles around the outside of the picture and I can then drag them in and basically specify what I want to see and what I don't want to see. So I'm going to drag this in like that. Anything in gray, as soon as I click the crop tool again, it's going to crop that out. So let's click crop tool. And there we go. I've managed to nicely crop that picture. So that's it. A very quick run through of how to insert both online pictures and pictures that you have saved off locally into your drawing and how to apply different formatting options. That's the end of this lesson. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.